bueno, gracias a, a todos eh, los que se unieron a este training, la verdad es que es eh, una muy buena oportunidad de, de poder escuchar a Tomás eh, Cusera, que es el gerente de desarrollo de negocios en Barsom. Eh, mi nombre es Laura Caane, yo soy gerente de desarrollo de negocios en Eritas y recientemente hemos firmado un acuerdo de distribución de las soluciones de Barsom en Argentina y en la región. Eh, creemos que este acople entre las soluciones que Barsom ofrece y los productos que desde Eritas ya ofrecemos eh, va a ser realmente muy útil para toda la comunidad de médicos, genetistas, laboratorios y para los pacientes, por supuesto. Así que estamos eh, felices de que estén participando con nosotros de este entrenamiento. Eh, estamos, por supuesto, a disposición para responder a cualquier consulta que ustedes tengan luego de este training o en cualquier momento. Y, ok, Tomás, eh, thank you for organizing this training and for the opportunity, opportunities that arise from this agreement. And, ok, let's start. All right, Laura, thank you. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. And so let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Tomas Cusera, and I'm the director of uh, business development at Vaso. And I'd like to give you, you know, a short introduction to, to our company, to what we do, what we are doing. And also I'd like to do a live demonstration of, of our tools for uh, interpretation of NG and data for clinical purposes. My presentation is going to take about uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes around that. Um, I think you might have questions. So if you have questions as I speak, please, there is a chat, uh, chat window where I, I believe you will find it. So that's the place for your questions, please. And also, Laura, I'd like to ask you to monitor those, those questions in the chat window. And so I think by, by the end of my presentation, we will have enough time to discuss all these questions. So Laura, please take care of questions. And uh, I think we are good to go. Um, and so uh, we are a bioinformatics company. We are based in Switzerland, in Lausanne, and we develop tools for processing and interpretation of NGS data for clinical purposes. Uh, we basically have two, two products or two services. The first one is called Warsome, which is the free platform. I believe you have seen it. It's, it's free and it's, uh, it's very useful, I believe. So I think that uh, at least some of you have seen it before. And the other platform is called uh, Warsome Clinical, which is a complete solution for interpretation of NGS data. Um, we have already, you know, number, we are on the market since 2014, that's around five or almost six years. And we have, you know, number, number of, number of customers in many, in many European countries, as well as uh, outside of Europe. So we have number of clients in the US, in Mexico, in Mexico, in, in Middle East, uh, or in Southeast Asia, in, in Japan, Korea, in Singapore. So we have basically like a, already a global, a global presence. Um, and so now I'd like to start first with, with the free platform, with the platform called Warsaw. And so Warsaw, it's a, you can think of it as a, a Google of genomics. It's a search engine. It's a data aggregator and, and, and search engine. And so what Warsam does is that Warsam aggregates and cross-references publicly available data. So at the moment, we have integrated over 35 data resources into a single cohesive knowledge base called Warsam. Databases such as CleanVar, DBSMP, Mondo, Ensemble, RefSeq, etc., etc. Simply put, over 35 data resources cross-referenced together. 
So that's the knowledge base. And then Varsum, of course, allows you to perform queries, to perform queries against it. So you can look up, you know, gen genomic variants using RSA, RS, RSID, using uh, AGBS term. You can look up variants using, you know, chromosomal positions. You can look up genes and phenotypes. So it functions a little bit as a Google. Yeah. It's like a, it allows you to perform like a full, full text queries. And so here I'd like to show you an example of a result page for a one, a particular variant in a BRAF gene. So first here you can switch between two reference genomes, AG1938. And then at the beginning here, of, co of course, you can see you know, the common information for the variant, such as chromosomal position, reference sequence, alternate sequence. Here, right below, you can see uh, uh, something what's, what's really important. And that's the automated, automated interpretation of pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines. And so in this case, in the case of, the, of this variant here, you can see that five ACMG criteria fired based on the evidence coming from 35 data resources. So in other words, our implementation of ACMG guidelines, it's, it's very robust and very solid because it's based on top of 35 data resources cross-referenced together. Also, it's also very it's also very transparent interpretation of ACMG guidelines because here it tells you in a human readable format why given criterion fired or didn't fire. So it's very very transparent. You can always review the situation here for each for each particular criterion. So it's also very transparent uh, interpretation according to ACMG guidelines. And third, it's also, it allows you to overwrite basically the default vetting here. And so not all the rules can be fully automated. Certain, certain ACMG criteria, as, as you know, require a patient specific information. And so that's the reason why you can always check in additional criteria based on the patient specific information only you have. And as you can see, the web updates dynamically. You can also you know, select the transcript here for annotation, which may also affect the final verdict. And so we are, we are actually especially strong in the interpretation part of the pipeline. When it comes to the, you know, the read alignment and variant calling, this is not uh, a really a rocket, you know, science. When it becomes to be really challenging is the interpretation part of the pipeline. And that's what we feel very, very confident about yeah, because our interpretation of pathogenicity is based on ACMG guidelines, which in turn leverage the data from uh, 35 data resources. And going uh, farther down the page, uh, you can see here, for example, region browser, which basically summarizes all the variants within the gene. And so here, for example, here you can see a number of pathogenic mutations. And so this is probably you know, an important uh, mutational hotspot here. And so for each variant here, you can see the evidence, the supporting evidence coming from uh, these uh, 35 data resources, such as GNOME, AD, Unipro, CleanVar, DBSM, KVR, ICGC, etc. Quantum is a free platform, which also means we have basically a global audience on it. We have over 175,000 users globally using Varsom every day. And so that's also the reason why you can see here a growing number of contributions from our global community. And so our users link publications, classify variants, or start discussions, or even start collaboration between completely unrelated entities. And then in turn, we actually leverage these contributions for 
ACMG guidelines. So for example, in the case of PP5 criterion here, we can see that it takes into consideration entries from CLINVAR as well as entries from our global Watson community. Yeah. And so that's additional, the, the contributions from our community is additional layer of data which we leverage for interpretation of pathogenicity and that's absolutely unique. No one else in the world has it. That's available only, only in Warsaw thanks to the contributions from our uh, global community. Going further, and here you can see, so this is a particularly well studied variant, right? So there is a number, number of contributions. Uh, here, of course, you can see the list of list of publications associate, associated with the variant. Uh, here you can see the structural variants coming from ClinVar, Exac, or DGV, or from Decipher. Here you can see the list of transcripts, RefSeq transcripts, ensemble transcripts, Invar entries. Again, this is a particularly well studied variant. So here you can see a number of entries from Clinvar. Uh, further, here you can see a uh, Uniprot variant, allelic frequencies from GNOME AD broken down by uh, ethnicities. Uh, here you can see again a PMKB. This is really important. Uh, PMKB is really important. Somatic data resource, it, it stands for a precision medicine knowledge base maintained by uh, Weill Cornell Institute from New York which also includes information about drugs as well as link for clinical trials. ICGC, then you can see here a number of other somatic data resources such as ICGC, Sanger Cosmic, Civic, Genomic Data Common, and at the end of the page, you can see a number of uh, in silico prediction scores. So indeed, on a single page, you can see a wealth of information coming from all these uh, 35 data resources. And so the free platform, Warsom.com, it's, it's a very convenient way how to look up a comprehensive information for genomic variants. And it also comes with uh, ACMG uh, interpretation of pathogenicity. All right, so this is the free platform. On top of it, we have built Warsom Clinical. And so Warsom Clinical is a complete solution for processing and interpretation of NGS data starting from past few or VCM. In the free platform here, you can look up only one variant at a time, right? However, with Warsom Clinical, you can start with FASTQ or VCL. And so, as I mentioned before, we are a company based in Switzerland, and that's also where we have our own physical server located. And so that's the place where our clients are supposed to upload the sequencing data, the FASTQ, FASTQ files or VCF files. In the second step, you can run the pipeline. We have a wide, wide range of pipelines covering a wide range of use cases. Uh, we have pipeline for germline samples, for somatic samples. Uh, we have pipeline for trios and for couples for carrier risk screening. Um, basically, uh, we cover pretty much all the all the use cases. And with Warsam Clinical, you can process any kind of NGS data, be it a gene panel or customized gene panel, or be it the exome or genome. You know, one some clinical can process, in fact, you know, any kind of, of NGS data. The only requirement for FASTQ files is that the FASTQ file has to be generated on Illumina sequencing machine. When it comes to VCF, we can take any kind of VCF as long as it conforms to the standards. And so it can be PadsBio or Thermo Fisher VCF file it doesn't really matter. However, when it comes to FASTQ, it has to be Illumina FASTQ file. Now, Warsam Clinical comes with a website interface, which means you don't need to install anything. Everything runs 
everything runs on our physical server in Switzerland and you access it through your uh, website browser. And at the end of the process, you can generate the clinical, clinical report. Uh, Warsam Clinical is a certified as an in vitro diagnostic medical device according to the CEIVD marking for medical devices, which is quite important, right, for, for clinical use. And also our company is certified with a number of ISO certificates for data quality and the other one, 27,001 for data security. Speaking of sensitivity and precision of our pipelines, it's, it's quite high, over 99.8% here. And actually these, these numbers are, 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 are results from the precision contest. And so the precision contest, it's, it's a basically a competition for a bioinformatics companies organized by MDA the Food and Drug Administration Office in the US. And that's where we regularly participate. And so these, these numbers actually are the results from the latest run of the precision contest. Okay, so this is just a uh, very, very brief introduction to our company and to our main products, to the free platform called Warsom and to our clinical clinical platform called uh, Warsom Clinical. Let me check if we have some questions in the chat window. No questions for the moment, all right. But again, feel free, feel free to ask, to ask questions in the chat window. Um, and so now I think I'd like to proceed and I'd like to show you the real uh, Warsom Clinical platform. And so, as I mentioned before, uh, first, you have to upload the data to, to our server in Switzerland. And so you can either select your files directly from your computer and send it over to our server, or you can also leverage API for automated transfer of data. We also offer a base space connector for automated transfer of data from Illumina base space to Warsome Clinical. Once you upload the data, you can start the analysis. So here you can see two options, right? Analysis starting from fast view or from BCF. So here I'm going to show you how to set up the analysis starting from a fast view file. And so first here on the right, you have to specify the pipeline, whether it's a single sample, whether it's a family trio, or whether it's like a couple for carrier risk screening. Here you can buy the germline sample or, or somatic sample here. Here you have to specify the assay, the Americas. It's just a demo account with a limited number of assays, but if it was a production account, you would also see here the Heritas, Focus, and uh, the other the other assays uh, developed by Heritas. Uh, if you have your own custom custom panel, we need the back file to be able to run the pipeline for it. Here you can specify the ethnicity of your sample. Here you can provide some additional data, such as details uh, of the sequencer. You can choose the reference genome, again, AG19 and 38. Here you can specify whether, whether, whether you want to call all the variants or only the variants that pass certain, certain quality filters. Uh, and here you can specify whether you want to whether you, whether you want to do a full analysis or gene list restricted analysis. And so here you can set up a gene list. So there are there are basically two ways how you can set up a gene list. So you can either set it up manually, just sim sim by simply copying and pasting the list of genes, or 
you can take the advantage of HPO, the human phenotype ontology terms for automated and gene list setup. And so here you can type in the phenotype of your interest, such as, you know, osteoporosis, for example, here. And so here you can see that osteoporosis phenotype is associated with these genes. Yeah, and so this is, the, this is the way how you can set up very quickly a specific uh, gene list for a specific list of phenotypes. And then in turn, you can apply it as a parameter for your, for your analysis to avoid incidental findings, for example, especially when it comes to exomes and genomes. Here on the left, of course, you have to select you know, the raw data that you have uploaded previously. Here you can, you can provide some sample, sample IDs and sample descriptions. Again, here you can type in the phenotypes of your patient and later on you can use these terms for variant filtering and variant prioritization. If it's, a, for example, a pipeline for a trio, of course, you have to specify the sequencing data for each individual sample for the child, mother, and father. And so here you have, you have to also specify whether the sample or whether the patient is affected or unaffected. And so once you set up all these details, you can start the analysis here. And so once the analysis is finished, you can of course, you know, access the results here. And so I'm going to show you first a whole genome sample with almost 5 million variants. So this is quite, quite typical a whole genome sample. As you can see, the variants are sorted uh, by default by pathogenicity according to CMG guidelines. And so for each variant here, you can see a number of codes. So here you can see the variant name, variant type, application. Here you can see However, if we don't agree with the rubbish or whatever it is, we can classify it. We can classify it as a benign or lightly benign body. This way, we can allow you to override the gene for You can also set up fully custom classification such as, you know, or variants working from a pharmacogenic or you can mark the variant as a variant that needs to be discussed with the lab director, for example. And again, you can apply it again you know, to the variant. And so what's really important here is that these classification a with the variant forever, basically, unless you change it or remove it. And so that also means that whenever you upload a new sample having the same variant, we will see the same classification mark here. And so this is the way how you can build over time your private database of, of classifications. Okay, going further here, you can see the HGBS term, the gene associated with the variant, mode of inheritance, function, whether it's you know, intronic, non coding, splicing variant, you name it. Analytic frequency according to the ethnicity specified in the step before, zygosity, whether it's heterozygous or homozygous variant. Analytic balance, which is basically the percentage of reads supporting the given verdict or support supporting the given variant. And here in the last column, you can see the coverage, which is the number of reads supporting the given variant. The coverage is a link, so you can click on it and it takes you to the NJ browse, 
JGraphs view where you can see the graphical representation, the graphical, graphical alignment of threes. Yeah, and so for example, here you can see there's an X on number six. And so you can zoom out and zoom in. And so this is something that allows you to check very quickly whether a particular X on has been covered or not. Uh, we also offer IGV graph uh, as a replacement for the graph. Let me quickly see for question. Oh. Hold on, do you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, I apologize. Let me check what's wrong with the connection. Laura, you hear me? Yes, I hear you, but uh, there are some problems with the sound. With the sound. Is, it, is it really bad or can you understand? I think that now it's okay. But I don't know how is everybody. I, I will ask them. Containing the quality of the sound. Right. right, I'm going to repeat uh, the last, mm -hmm. last, last few uh, points. Okay, yes. so I was, I was basically just, you know, describing the variant table here. And so here, you can see all the variants sorted by pathogenicity, and you can see the variant name, variant type, uh, classification of it, list of AC and G criteria that fired for each variant. And here you can see the custom, Classification. All right. All right. So here you can see the column for, for custom classification. So I was saying you know, that this variant is a pathogenic variant according to ACMG, but if you don't agree with the verdict for whatever reason, you can reclassify it. And so here you can reclassify it as a benign or likely benign variant or you can set up a fully customized classification, such as, you know, variant important from a pharmacogenomics perspective or variant that needs to be discussed with the lab, with the lab director. And then in turn, again, you can apply these custom classifications to, to your variants here. And so what's really important here is that these custom classification, classification space with the variant forever, unless you change it or remove it. And so that also means that whenever you upload a new sample with the same variant, you will see the same classification mark here. And so this is the way how we can build over time your private database of classifications. But we can also do, we can even take your, you know, locally, locally, manu manually created list of classifications, I guess you might have it, and we can upload it privately to your uh, Watson clinical account for classification purposes. And going farther, farther down the table here, you can see the AGVS term, the gene associated with the variant, mode of inheritance, function, whether it's coding, non-coding, frame shift variant, frequency, this is the analytic frequency according to the ethnicity, of the patient specified in the step before zygosity, analytic balance, which is the person which of these supporting the given variant. And here in the end, you can see a column for coverage, which is basically the number of reads supporting the given variant. You can click on it here and it takes you to the JBrowse view where you can see the graphical representation of reads. And so this allows you, you know, to perform a very quick, you know, checks 
whether a particular exon, in this case, exon six, you can check very quickly whether it has been fully covered or, or not. So this is the this is the variant table here. And then around the variant table, you can see a number of tabs. And so in these tabs, you can see, for example, alarm frequencies, clean var entries, all the transcripts, genes, uh, HPO terms, cross-reference samples. I'll get back to it in a while. Nearby variant. And then beneath the variant table here, you can see another set of tabs. So there is a tab for ACMG classification, for example. Again, there is the region browser, clinvar entries, cosmic entries, caviar, analytic frequencies, somatic data resources such as ICGC, in silico, in silico predictions, list of publications, as well as contributions from our uh, global community. So in fact, in these tabs on the right and beneath the variant table, you can, you can see basically the same set of information as in the free, as in the free platform. Right. So here, you can, for example, you, you can even click on the link here and it takes you to the free bus. Uh, one some uh, results here. And here, what we basically do, we store we store all your data as long as you are as you are our client. And so what we do is that we link all your samples together on the variant level. And so that's what you can see here in this tab. Yeah, so here, for example, you can see this particular variant in the blue box here. You can see that it has been found in a heterozygous form in two samples of yours, in a sample called exome 7 and in this whole genome sample. So this is only a demo account with a limited number of samples, of course. However, as you upload more and more samples over time, you will see the list of link samples to grow. And so this is something what allows you to compare your past cases with current cases, compare the phenotypes and increase the diagnostic yield for your patients. Yeah. We link the samples on two levels. We link the samples only at you know, on two levels, we either, you know, link only your own samples together or we also link all the samples across all the clients together. Yeah. And so in those cases here, you can see that we display only the number of occurrences. Yeah. In those cases, we cannot display any, any sensitive information. However, when it comes to your own samples, we can display here, you know, the list of phenotypes and, and, and allelic balance and, and other, you know, supporting pieces of data. So this is the sample, sample cross-referencing, really a powerful feature, which allows you to increase uh, the diagnostic yield. And here you can see the ECMG uh, grid. So of course, again, you can check, you can trigger additional a CMG criterion based on your private knowledge. And as you can see, the verdict again update dynamically. And so then you can save it here as a manual classification. So again, it stays with the variant forever. So whenever you upload a new sample, the same variant will see the same customized ACMG verdict. So just to sum it up, these three features, the custom classifications here, the sample cross-referencing here, and custom ACMG verdict here, these three features taken together allow you to build over time your private database of samples and classifications. Okay. Um, now, uh, what some clinical, it's, it's, a, it's a clinically certified platform, which also means that it comes with a number of QC reports, quality control reports. 
And so for example, here you can access the basic QC report, which summarizes the details of the analysis. So first you can see you know, the sample details, details of the pipeline, databases used for annotation and interpretation. Here you can see the summarization of, of the alignment step of the pipeline, so number of reads, number of the gates, etc. Here you can see the summarization according to the coverage, summarization according to the pathogenicity, the number of pathogenic variants and number of pathogenic variants. Here you can see again a similar summarization for each particular ACMG criterion. And at the end, you can see the summarization based on the function number of minimum variants or the number of plots you know, variants, for example. Basic, basic QC report. <clears throat> However, there is even more comprehensive report called the coding coverage report. And so first, to get the coding coverage report, first you have to specify again the gene list for which you want to generate the coding coverage report. And then you get an Excel sheet with a very detailed coding coverage report broken down by individual genes and sequencing depth. Yeah. So this is the place where you can where you can identify the regions which which has been you know poorly covered or missed altogether. So this is the ultimate coding coding coverage report, which is uh, really useful for troubleshooting purposes. And then there is a number of other options you can download: the bump file, the index bump file. You can download the list of variants and other uh, other things. Um, all right. And so now, as you can see, we have five million variants. So we obviously need filters. So what some clinical comes with two types of filters. Here on the left, you can access the first kind of filters, which allows you to filter your variants based on a number of criteria, such as ACMG rules. You can filter your variants based on ACMG criteria, based on allylic frequency, based on in silico prediction score, based on clean wire classification, based on chromosomal position, based on pathogenicity classification, based on zygosity, based on function, whether it's 5UT or coding, frame shape, start you know, in frame notation. Again, you can apply a gene list as a filter. Call statues, you can, you can filter all the variants that fail QC metrics, for example. Or you can filter you know, variants based on the coverage. And then there's a number of other options here. And so to give you a real example, how it works. So let's suppose we want to filter out only rare variants with a frequency less than one person. So now basically we are setting up a filter set. A filter set may consist of several filters such as allele frequency filter, and the other one can be, for example, pathogenicity filter for pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants. So now we have two filters within the filter set. We give it a name. And we apply it to the sample. And so once you set up a filter set, you can use it again and again for all your samples. And so as you can see, you know, the filtering, you know, it's, it's really fast. I can show you again, you know. So for example, here you can deactivate, you know, the filters and you can reactivate it again. And as you can see, everything is happening really fast. And so based, for example, based on the other frequency filter here, you can see that four, over four million variants have been filtered. And based on the pathogenicity filter, you can see that additional 881,000 variants have been filtered out 
and so we are left with only with only eight variants in the variant table here. You can always deactivate, you know, certain certain filters or reactivate it again. You can even go one step further and you can modify the filter set here. And so let's say we want to include also AC and G filter for PP5 criteria. We edit, and so we edit to the filter set and we again apply it to the sample. And here you can see again, everything happens really fast. And so based on the AC and G filter, six variants have been eliminated and we are left with only two variants in the, in the variant table here. And so this is the first kind of filters. As you can see, these filters are really easy to use, easy to modify, and everything updates dynamically. And so that's the reason why we call these filters and dynamic filters. Yeah, because you can apply them, you can modify them dynamically. And the other kind of filters is called algorithmic filters. So algorithmic filters are even more, even more powerful. You can think of it as a specific programs we build for each customer, depending on the specific workflow of each customer. And so here you can see the most common examples of algorithmic filters. And so with algorithmic filters, for example, you can you can filter, you know, the recessive candidates, or you can you can filter only de novo variants in trios, or you can perform a segregation kind of analysis for dominant or recessive variants, etc. Or you can you can filter only compound heterozygous variants. So here you can always click on the blue circle, and it tells you in a great detail how given algorithmic filter works. The really important thing here is that these filters can be fully customized according to your workflow and according to your specific needs. And so we are, that's also, you know, another advantage of, of working with us and with Erita that actually our, our company is it's still relatively small. And so we are always very close to our clients and we really like to provide personalized services. And so that's why we have these algorithmic filters to allow for this flexibility that our clients need. And here you can see the results again. And so here, for example, you can see the original whole genome, whole genome analysis with almost 5 million variants. And within, you can see a number of sub analyses. And so each sub-analyze corresponds to the results of an algorithmic filter. In other words, algorithmic filter creates a snapshot of the original parent analysis. And so for example, here you can see exome trio, exome trio with an algorithmic filter for de novo variants. So again, you can click on it and you will see the variant table here with then more variants in exome trio. This is again pretty much the same dashboard with a slight difference. So for example, here you can see the zygosity for each individual sample. Other and the same for polygola. And there is a number of other uh, examples. You know, here you can see You also have a CMV for, for open the variation variant here. And you can see the results also for, for CMVs. And here you can see the, uh, the table with all the with all the CMVs. Sample and then how well it overlaps with publicly available data from CLINAR, A1, the CMV operating
All right, let's go back to Moon Genome Sample. So as you can see, you know, the filtering possibilities are quite extensive and lots of things also can be, can be customized based on your specific workflow. Uh, I think the last step is the reporting part of Watson Chemical. And so once you filter down the variants in your sample, you can select it for export. And once you do that, you can proceed and you can generate the chemical report. So here, you can see it. And so everything can be fully customized, right? Of course, the logo can be, can be, and the header can be also modified, or branding policy. And it functions, the reporting part, it functions as a, as a drug and drug control. And so here on the left, you can see the list of widgets available for each particular kind of sample. And so for example, here you can drag in generic content area. Then you can drag in the information about the variant, information about the mean, and a list of preferences. And so here, for example, here is the content area, the widget for content where you can provide some specific com comments for the report. And here you can see the information about the variant, the AGVS term, classification of it, and also comment. So you can even set up, here you can also set up comments for variants. That's why you can see here this, this little, little bubble, which indicates there is a, there is a comment on the variant and then this then this comment actually becomes a part of the clinical report here uh, here you can see the information about the gene the list of phenotypes according to the human phenotype ontology inher inheritance etc etc and then at the end you can see the list of references everything is fully editable everything also can be everything can be also fully fully translated into a language. And even the list of publications, it's fully editable. So in case you don't like this publication, you don't like these people, you can easily remove the publication from the list and you can add, for example, you can add your own publication here. Yeah. So this is the reporting, reporting part. And then once you are once you are done with, with the report, you can download it as a PDF file or as a doc file. You know, the list of widgets here depends on the sample you are working on. Yeah. So if it was a somatic sample, you would also see a widget for drugs and widget for clinical trials, for example. So that's what you can see here. Here is the, the final report. Again, this is just, you know, the default template. The template can be fully customized according to your needs. And so here you can see the final report, the PDF report, which also includes information for, for drugs and for, for clinical. clinical. Okay, so I think I have covered pretty much all the most important aspects of Watson Clinical. It's a, it's a complex platform, but once you start using it, you will see that it's, it's quite easy to use. Uh, again, with Watson Clinical, you can process any kind of data, be it a gene panel, exome, or, or genome, as long as you, as you sequence or Lumina machine. All right, I think I will, I will check for questions. Oh, yeah, the connection is not good. So I hope, I hope you see me, uh, you hear me. Um, so Laura, I think I have covered the most, the most important aspects of 
of Warsaw Clinical. Also, I, I have to say that I'm, we are really you know, excited about this partnership with, with Heritas. So with Heritas, what we do, basically we, we bundle our products together. And so uh, you can get, for example, you know, the Focus, Focus Essay, which has been developed by Heritas and you can get it bundled with, with Warsaw with Warsaw Clinic, for example. So this is, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. Uh, I'll see again for, I'll see if I, we have some questions. There's a question about CNVs. Yes, so uh, we basically continuously develop the platform based on uh, based on requests from our clients and so uh, the cnv pipeline cnv pipeline is still relatively new however we keep improving it based on the requests from from our customers so at the moment uh, you need at least like a, if it, when it comes to a gene panels you need Ideally, between ten and between five and ten, ten samples sequenced in the same run to to achieve, you know, the best possible results for the CNV pipeline. And speaking of larger, larger structural arrangements, um, yeah, uh, I think we also do have an, an, another specific pipeline under development for for a larger uh, CNVs. However, what we really need is are some uh, validation, validation data before we release it into production. So, yes. So, any more questions here? Laura, can you think of some questions? I can, I can see more questions. No. Do you have any question for everybody? So perhaps, you know, Laura, perhaps uh, you could just mention, you know, the Heritas products where, where we bundle uh, our products together. That's a Heritas Focus, which is an exome solution, right? Yes, uh, Focus is the exome solution and the, the solution we offer as, uh, as you uh, mentioned during the, um, the webinar, uh, our solution is uh, monitored by EQUAS, so it's a um, certified uh, platform, so uh, everybody can be um, very confident about the results for the diagnostic use. And then um, we have CLEAR, that is the platform for hereditary uh, cancer, um, and that's it. Acá me dicen que hablo en español. <risas> yeah. eh, ok. Eh, para todos, la, las soluciones que tenemos eh, de trabajo son, por un lado, Focus, que es para exoma clínico, exoma trío, y eh, acoplado con Barsom logramos una solución de uso diagnóstica, monitoreada por controles de calidad externo permanentemente, eh, y también tenemos soluciones eh, para cáncer hereditario en, eh, en esta forma de trabajo en conjunto con Bundle, eh, con Barsom, eh, con lo cual la solución es bien eh, completa eh, y creemos que va a ser de gran utilidad para, para todos los que la quieran utilizar eh, luego de esta presentación eh, que ha sido bien completa eh, creo que seguramente van a surgir consultas y, y bueno, y estamos dispuestos a, a ayudarlos con lo que necesiten. Exactamente, sí, por cualquier consulta se pueden como conectar directamente con Caritas o con, conmigo mismo. Um, sí, nos estamos muy, muy emocionados por esta nueva, nueva colaboración con Caritas y, y estamos dispuestos a a responder a cualquiera, cualquiera pregunta que, que pueden tener. Okay.